Today I want to take a look at Google Analytics and how to integrate that to an SPFX application customizer. And an application customizer is a way that we can add JavaScript to modern pages in Office 365 SharePoint Online. Modern pages generally do not allow us to inject JavaScript the way you did on classic pages with content editor and script editor. So we need a new technique for adding things to modern pages, especially JavaScript, where we want to inject something like Google Analytics tracking code, make that part of a modern site. There's a special way to go about doing it, and we can use SPFX to inject the JavaScript. And for an idea of what we're talking about, here's a blog post from Chris O'Brien talking about header and footer zones and that you may want to brand your site and add extra things to the page using the application customizer. And that is a way of customizing a modern page. So we're going to leverage the same technique, but what we're going to add is the Google Analytics tracking JavaScript code. So the users won't see it, but the same technique is used for injecting code onto the page. Here's another couple screenshots, another screenshot. So this is what we're talking about when we say application customizer is really a header and footer on a modern page. First, to start in Google Analytics, you want to have a Gmail account and log into analytics.google.com. And here you're going to create a new tracking code, a new property, they call it. The way you go about doing that is by navigating into your existing account and adding a property. So in the bottom left, we'll click on Admin. We've got our existing property. We're going to click this one in the top center called Create Property. And we want to measure your website about traffic, behavior, conversion. Yeah, definitely the first option. And this will give us a new tracking code that we can use for tracking our site. So in this case, we may want to track our route for our Office 365. So we'll go ahead and put this in here. And we'll do a SharePoint online address. And we'll go ahead and do create. As soon as we hit the create button, we get this handy little code coming back with a new gtag ua tracking code. This is what we're going to need to go ahead and set up Google Analytics. Normally, you would inject that to your page and you'd be up and running. With modern SharePoint sites, we have to go through a little bit more to get that injected to our site. And really, you don't want it on just the one page. Uh, in 2013 or SharePoint on-premise, you might have customized your master page and kind of injected the HTML so it's part of the branding for the site overall. Not available with a modern site. We need to use the application customizer to inject that header footer. So if we're wanting to add JavaScript to the full site where it's on the home page, the library views, article pages, and pervasive through the site, we need to use SPFX to inject it. We switch over to our tenant. We're going to open up the SharePoint Admin Center, take a look at the sites that are out there, and make sure that we have an app catalog ready to go. Sites catalog is the URL. And then we have a site ready to go at the root. And this is matching the URL that we just gave Google Analytics. There is a great blog post, The Ultimate Guide to Set Up Google Analytics from Bradley. And this goes through a lot of the steps. So here, same sort of things. We're creating a new tracking ID. We want to go ahead and deploy things. He covers 2010, 2013. And with modern sites, we are going to use Yo at Microsoft SharePoint for the SharePoint framework. So if you have that set up in your environment, fantastic. Uh, if not, there is an article to go ahead and set up SPFX on your local machine. Here we'll go ahead and give our solution a name. And we can create a subfolder. And we are targeting this for a single site collection, so we'll say no to that one. And we'll choose extension, not web part. We'll choose application customizer. What is the name of your customizer? We'll put in the same name as the project again. What's your description? Same thing. And that creates our solution. 
with our project created, we want to navigate into our folder and go ahead and open Visual Studio Code. And here we are looking for Application Customizer TS, which is going to be under the Source folder. There it is. And that's really the heart of the project. This file is doing most of the heavy lifting. So in here, we're currently tracking test message. We want to make sure that we add to that a string for missing ID. So right there in the interface for properties. And then we want to come down and we want to find the on init promise that this is kind of where things invoke and load. And we need to populate that with a little bit more code. And for that, we're going to look at the ultimate guide blog post and bring in this export default class that has our class name. But we're going to take right after the class name, the extends all the way down through the code block, a couple of different methods, overrides, whatnot. We're going to bring that down here and really kind of finish out the file that we're exporting this particular class name, which matches our project, but what it does after that, we're going to go ahead and loop together with the, the larger picture overall. And we'll do format document just to check our copy paste work. Cool. And in the center here, what you'll notice is there is an expression for the tracking ID to push in a G tag script tag. And here's the attributes. It's a script tag, text JavaScript. There's the URL with the tracking ID. And this is what we're trying to insert to the page. So in the same line where we have our class name that was populated from Yeoman, the extend really needs to be a little different where it's extending not the base customizer, but this one. With the type application customizer properties, we put that into brackets here. And we also have a private variable for a current page. One thing I want to add to this is a comment for where we got the code from. Cite your work, reference back to the original, good stuff. One last thing we want to do is on the test message, we'll rename that to tracking ID. So these are the two properties that we're bringing in. Now at this point, we can go ahead and try to do a gulp build. And we'll let that roll through our TypeScript. Okay. Found a couple of different issues with the project in the TS file. That is definitely the one. Okay. And this could be formatting. Got a couple different things going on. So replace all, return. Yeah, that comment wasn't marked out correctly. There was a curly brace, typing issue here. All right, let me try that. Okay, now the gulp build is much closer, but it is kicking an error about property missing ID does not exist on the strings. And a second error that generic type promise T requires one type argument. The generic promise, we can go ahead and type that as any and then rerun gulp build. Okay, helpful, yes. Now we're down to one error in the application customizer TS50, missing ID does not exist. So we'll go look at line 50. And that's referencing to the strings object, which is imported from customizer strings. And if we open up the project's LOC folder for localization, there is a my strings. And here we have an export occurring. But at the moment, what we are exporting only has title. So we're going to add one more for missing ID and give that a definition. Come on up here. 
and we'll say tracking ID missing and go ahead and see. Coming back over to our console, we'll run gulp build again, see what happens. It's running well, successfully completed. Excellent news. So now we can go ahead and run gulp package solution dash dash ship. That's the command we want to go ahead and bundle our extension. And right now we're getting an error on the console because the gulp build we did did not include dash dash ship. Putting the ship parameter will prepare another folder that has the media we need to package. So we'll run build with ship. Now we can run package with ship. And reviewing this a little bit on GitHub, there is a comment. Reviewing this a little bit on Stack Overflow, there's a comment that if you package ship without doing bundle, it'll cause the command to fail. So you do want to run gulp bundle dash dash ship. So let's go ahead and do that. Bundle dash dash ship. Let that command run. So build one, bundle two, package three. All right, bundle completed. Now we will package. And that completed successfully. Beautiful. And just for recommended commands overall, when we're doing SPFX, we want to clean, build, bundle, and then package. Four-step process. So now we should have some subfolders. SharePoint, Solution, that has our SPPKG file, and this is what we want to upload to our app catalog. So we'll go back over to the instructions, and we're going to be using PowerShell for this. So we'll go ahead and make a fresh console window, and we'll load the PowerShell online module. Okay. And I'll go ahead and follow that with an import command to do both. Now we're ready to start using the commands. On the app catalog, we want to go ahead and upload our file and do all organization and deploy. So we'll switch over to our app catalog. And we can say apps for SharePoint. And I want to go ahead and upload. So here we found our SPPKG file. We'll go ahead and provide that to the app catalog site. We're prompted with a deploy dialog. We'll go ahead and say yes to that. Now if we navigate to our root site collection, we can go to site contents. We can do new app to add an app. We're going to get a menu with all of the out of the box choices, but it also includes any SPFX choices. So here we have our Google Analytics solution that we've been working on. We'll go ahead and click on that to add this to our root site collection. There it is adding. And it'll show in kind of a gray, opaque icon. And it'll show in kind of a grayed out icon while it's doing the install. So you may want to give the page just a moment and reload. When it comes back in the dark blue color, then you know that app has been loaded. At this point, we can go to PowerShell for the next step. So here we're leveraging the Ultimate Guide SharePoint Vital steps. We're going to connect out to our tenant, and we'll be prompted for login. And now that we're logged in, we can do git PMP web just to echo back our context. And that shows that we do have a connection. And now we want to go ahead and build up the correct command for the add. So on that, we're going to be looking at add PMP custom action, client side component, a unique GUID, GA4 SharePoint, title, tracking ID, UA change me. So the UA change me is where we need to get the number from our Google Analytics dashboard. All right, so I'll paste that number in here, 
the UA dash is the correct number. We need to generate a GUID. Very easy to do on PowerShell. Just type new GUID. We'll get a random one generated. We can put that in here. And now we've got a, yeah, yeah, we've got a new command to go ahead and run on our PowerShell console. So we'll paste that over here. That ran successfully. So let's see if we do git pmp custom action echo back id number yeah okay looks like we have that uh, loaded so reloading the page and checking the network tab for traffic i do not see the google analytics tracker showing up and i think i know why we actually need to use a different guid from our project found in the manifest JSON. So if we go back over to our project and look at the config, there's a couple of different files that, that manage the, the project overall. And over here we have a C43 number for the manifest of our solution. That's what we need to use, not generating a new one. Plenty of times to generate a new GUID, but here we need to reference this differently and use the GUID of the SPFX that we provided. So to clean up the site and remove what is already out there, we're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting and see what else can we do with PMP custom actions. Looks like there's a git command, there's a remove command. We'll go ahead and remove the ones that are out there. Now if we echo back a git command, it's empty. We can take our updated add with the correct GUID, paste that into the site. Now from the home page, I want to navigate into documents and get a modern UI to load. So here we can see we've got the waffle icon, top center search, sync button. We're looking at modern UI, so this is a little bit different. And on the F12 network tab, I did a search query for GTAG. And GTAG is something special we can look for for the Google tracking. We see initiators, SPFX, Google Analytics. We've got a 200 code. And there is our tracking code. This is the essential piece we've been looking for. So it is on the site. And if we were to go over to our Google Analytics dashboard, take a look at that you can actually open on the left hand side the real-time report we see one active user on the site and that they opened the shared documents url that lets us know that we successfully installed it it's working correctly even shows your location on the map so this is a tour of how we can use spfx application customizer to inject the google analytics tracking code on our modern pages. Thank you for watching.